Hello, I'm Robert Martin, Executive Director of the Citizens Conservation Corps of West Virginia, better known as the CCC. We perform community service and work projects throughout the entire state of West Virginia. People often ask me, where can you find the CCC? In the forest of West Virginia, building cabins, which provide recreational opportunities for our visitors. In the New River Gorge, helping to preserve our natural beauty. On golf courses, teaching life skills and education through the game of golf. Where can you find a CCC? On our state's highways, assisting stranded motorists. On biking and hiking trails throughout the state. On the New River, building water access points for whitewater rafting. The best way to describe the Citizens Conservation Corps of West Virginia would be the four T's, transportation, trails, tourism, and training. The banner program for the CCCs, of course, is the courtesy patrol. Welfare to Work had just come into existence in 1998. And at the same time, Senate Resolution Number 30 had passed, reinstating the courtesy patrol back onto West Virginia's highways. Our executive director came up with the great idea to utilize welfare recipients as the patrol drivers for the courtesy patrol program. They went through a pretty comprehensive training course in the public relations, the hospitality, minor mechanical repair, map reading, safety. When motorists are stranded along the side of the road, there's someone that's actually specifically uh, patrolling the interstates and major highways throughout the state of West Virginia. We operate 365 days a year, seven days a week. There are no holidays. They can change the platform or if they need a tow company, we call towing companies for them. Uh, if they need to use our cell phones, they can use our cell phones. They are certified in safety and first aid and CPR. They can do minor vehicle repairs. The Courtesy Patrol is an opportunity for the state of West Virginia have an incalculable kind of public impact on folks in terms of marketing, in terms of public relations, because if you're stranded motorist and I come to you as a courtesy patrol person and I render service to you and I do it very courteously, I do it very timely, I do it efficiently, I do it professionally, but I do it very warmly in the West Virginia manner that no matter where you're from, whether you're from Canada or California, you're going to remember that. You can't buy that kind of publicity. They provide a service that is uh, well thought of throughout the the nation. There's a lot of states that want to have what we have. They free us up for us to go out and do our jobs uh, a little more proficiently. From the highway perspective, you have an extra set of eyes looking for things that could harm the traveling public. They're a real help because they save us a lot of time just roaming up down these roads. Well, there's been many instances and times where we've saved lives out on the highway. I seen a truck coming westbound, sparks coming from underneath the tires, and I didn't think you know, anything about it un until it caught a fire. So instantly what I did is I crossed the medium, blocked the traffic both ways, called 911, made sure the driver was out of the truck. So the fire department got there, and then the, the rescue squad and all that, they took over and took care of the rest of it. 
one couple had newborn uh, kids in their vehicle and they had run out of gas, didn't have no way to get to you know, a safe place. Well, we was able to give them the gas you know, to get them to safety. The gratitude is really, it can take you by surprise. You're giving hugs, you're giving handshakes. They tell you we're glad you're here. We're so glad you're out here. People want your address, they want to send you cards, you know. We have people that call in just to say thank you for the drivers. In nine years of operation, over 1,500 individuals have been removed from the welfare rolls. When I got my job at the Courtesy Patrol, I told my sons, and they were very happy and very proud that their mom had got a job. It made me feel proud to be able to be in, back in the workforce again. It was beginning a new start for me. For me, getting off public assistance, being as a male, as the head of my family, was a great thing. I liked being back on my feet. And it just made me feel so much better about myself trying to get out on my own and getting away from the whole system. It was a relief to get off welfare. The welfare to work concept, I think that was a very ingenious concept. You're taking people from assistance to a point where they can become self-sufficient. The educational component of the Courtesy Patrol enables our drivers to not only work and earn a paycheck, but also simultaneously pursue their education. I've seen numerous drivers that have come into the program, transitioned out, bettered their sales in finding a job that they had went to school to train for. When I was with the Courtesy Patrol, I uh, took advantage of some of the educational uh, opportunities and got the Class A CDL driver's license. I've been able to use it since then to, you know, with my employment. They sent me to some beginning computer classes. I was basically computer illiterate when I started that class, but when I come out, I knew what I was doing. In November of 2005, the Curse Patrol program had the day shift eliminated. This was due to a budget cut. With Curtis Patrol not being there on day shift, uh, it ties law enforcement up for more extended periods of time because it takes away from us doing other duties that we're out there to do. The daytime, that's when the hours are cut back and that's probably the busiest for traffic here. Seven o'clock in the morning when you've got people that are coming to work and they break down, you know, they don't have anyone to help unless they call, you know, state police or somebody. Since uh, Hershey Patrol's lost their day shift, a lot of more incidents here on the roadway we're having to deal with as far as, you know, people stranded, broke down, out of gas. Um, what would be a real help is if they had more of them, it would help us out tremendously. The lady said that she called the tow truck and they told her they charged her $55 for $5 worth of gas. And she says, I said, I would just sit here and wait until the Curtis Patrol comes up at 3 o'clock. And she did that. When we put an Amber Alert out, we contact the uh, Courtesy Patrol Central Office, and the Central Office then notifies the uh, drivers uh, that are out in the field of where the alert occurred, what area, and any other descriptive information they may have on the offender, the vehicle, or the suspect that we're looking for. What this does is, is with the Courtesy Patrol, it gives us an additional 25 sets of eyes on the road in different areas of the state to assist in looking for this uh, missing child. After September 11th, there was increased emphasis on states looking at all vulnerable targets for possible uh, terrorism uh, activity. So the Curtis Patrol drivers were trained by the Department of Homeland Security in what to look for and actually perform some checks of uh, critical bridges and monitor those uh, during the time right after September 11. There were naysayers that did not think the program could work. And nine years later, we're a national model and considered the best program of its kind. And people don't even realize that we have former welfare recipients that are patrol drivers on the highway. The Trails and Developmental Program utilizes young people between the ages of 16 to 24 to work in work projects throughout the state. The work projects uh, include the CNO Canal, the crew is working on doing clearing and maintenance of the towpath trail. At New River, National River, there are several crews that are working on various projects including trail maintenance 
and building stabilization. We also have a partnership with the Mining Academy located in Beaver. Through the Department of Labor, we have a contract and we utilize two crews at the Mining Academy, one to do their grounds maintenance on the outside and we also have a crew working on the inside doing minor construction work. We've been partners with the CCCWB for about seven to nine years. Unlike uh, most youth programs, the CCCWB comes to us as a package. We don't have to hire, recruit, uh, train. It's a, it's a really special relationship we have with the CCCWB. I've been with the Citizens Conservation Corps of West Virginia for five years. I'm a supervisor of three to four crew members. Their stint here with the CCCWB is two years. In that two years, we try to teach them job ethics that will further them down the road. The reason I came to the CCC is they have a program that helps with college. When you work so many hours, they give you so much money towards college. What attracted me was the fact that I could get my GED and my trade and get paid for it. We work hand in hand with the National Park Service doing various projects from um, helping renovate houses to brickwork to weed whacking, cutting grass. Since coming to work for the CCC, I've gained a deeper appreciation for what it takes to keep and maintain these parks. We do a lot of environmental projects with the National Park Service in West Virginia and to help citizens of West Virginia as far as tourism, recreation, and also adds to the local economy. My work ethic has strengthened in the fact that I'm no longer scared to take the lead and take initiative. This job has showed me how to work hard and move to something I want later on in life. Working with WVCC and Job Corps, I can pretty much say it was one of the best decisions of my life. Our company decided several years ago to begin investing in some tourism. We contracted with Beaver Coal Company to build eight luxurious cabins. The cabins are used by tourists in state and out of state that come during the winter for ski season, during the spring and the summer for rafting. The cabins turned out fantastic. They're incredibly luxurious and we have had so many great comments regarding the quality of the product that was built by the Citizens Conservation Corps. I think the programs that have taken place in the uh, National Park have been phenomenal. One of the successes was the renovation of the town of Thurman, a very historical railroad community in the Gorge of New River. A lot of hard work and efforts and craftsmanship went into revitalizing those buildings down there that make that just a wonderful tourist destination. There are about 20 to 30 historic structures there and the historic structures and the landscape around it was being taken over by a noxious vine called kudzu and one of the first projects that the CCCWB took on for us was cutting and removing five acres of kudzu. It was a monumental chore that these young people took on in the middle of the summer. They had to uh, deal with the snakes, the chiggers, the ticks, uh, and also the rough terrain climbing the hill. But they did an excellent job for us. And even today, five years later, we still have that plant material under control. Another project was replacing the boardwalk at Sandstone Falls. The crew worked on the, the boardwalk, doing painting and replacing the planks and the wooden siding along the, uh, the boardwalk across the river. Another project that we worked on was the renovation of this office building or our organization's main hub here in the Beckley area. We utilized a crew of 16 crew members along with four seasoned veteran supervisors to do the renovation of the, uh, the garage area, storage area, into 11 offices. You know, people sometimes forget that uh, when they go to a state park, all of the efforts and all the talent and time that people spent to give them that beautiful scenery, the ability to go see nature and to enjoy nature as it should be. These are successes that 
can't be measured in dollars and cents. The first T is another program that the CCC is extremely proud of. It's providing instruction and core values that will be with these individuals for life. The program is free to uh, the community. Kids ages range from six to 17. My girls were introduced to this program from the CCC of West Virginia. Um, they were real excited about playing golf. My children love this program. They come here with smiles on their faces. I learned from the pros to have a good solid swing and to always keep my eye on the ball and to never give up. It's very fun to golf and you get to learn a lot and it's just so much fun. I've learned many things, how to hit the ball and everything. It's a new experience for me. How to greet people and how to look them straight in the eye and give a very firm handshake, to be a good sport whether we win or lose, and not to cheat. I learned how to hit harder and learned how to putt better. When the children first arrive at First Tee, they don't start playing golf right away. They actually have um, a lesson that's based on the nine core values. One value is talked about at each session. When the core value is discussed, the children are um, taught how that works in real life and what that means to them for the rest of their life. Honesty, integrity, sportsmanship, respect, confidence, responsibility, perseverance, courtesy, judgment. All of those characteristics and qualities are important in life in general, not just in the golf game. The volunteer instructors here at the First Tee have been basically the good golfers of the area, the pros of the area. They spend their time here to help the children. They volunteer as much hours as they can, and I really appreciate it as a parent what they've done. We have teamed up with several of the golf courses around in our area, and, and pretty much a, a partnership uh, to uh, help with the kids and, and give them an opportunity to really go out and play on a real live golf course with real live golfers. Black Knight Country Club is one of the sponsor clubs of the first tee at Beckley. We share some equipment and we go over from time to time and help with the grass. And then when the kids reach a certain level in the first tee, they come over and play the Black Knight Country Club course, uh, try and uh, demonstrate the skills they've learned uh, at the first tee on a real golf course. I think Hunter has learned more discipline, um, knowing that you have to keep at something in the practice and that you're not always going to be perfect. He's learned a lot of values and social skills. He's also learning the essentials of golf and the basics that he needs to know to become a good golfer. Since he's been in the first tee program, he's uh, gained a lot more confidence. He's uh, became a conflict manager at his school. It's developed new friendships with other friends in different sports. Uh, it's got him out of the house a lot more. I think First Tee is a wonderful program. Um, I had mentioned it at my church, trying to get other people involved in it. I mean, first of all, the child is learning a new skill and, and another sport. You know, every, these days it's all about basketball and football, and it's nice to know that there's other programs out there that the children can participate in, and not to mention it's a free program. All you have to do is bring your child, and they learn a, a good skill that they could take to pros or, or just for pleasure. Now that the skills he's learned from the first tee program, he can start going out and playing um, at a golf course with his grandfather. They're playing well enough now that I feel comfortable even taking my son out with my friends to play. Um, it's very good for Jose and for many kids to, to have a, a good place and to play and practice and to have experience in another area. I think it's just a wonderful way for children to learn about life skills, to learn about the game of golf, and to, to just learn things that will help them throughout their life being a more courteous person, having more generosity, and understanding how they need to act, act and treat other human beings. In an effort to help assist with the cleanup that was going on down in the Gulf Coast, we were approached by the Core Network to think about sending a crew. We chose four young people from the Harpers Ferry Job Corps Center as our Gulf Coast Recovery Crew. When they first approached me about going to, to the Gulf, I wasn't too sure. Like, I really didn't know if I really wanted to go. But after thinking, after, you know, some careful thought, you know, I, I thought it'd be good, you know, like a little experience for me to 
that I think I enjoy. When I first heard about it, I was nervous. And then I went home and I had talked to my grandmother about it. And my grandma told me to go ahead and go for it. When they first told me, I told her yes. There wasn't no debating or nothing. I just said, yeah, I want to go. So it just sounded interesting to me. I said, okay, that'd be nice. It's a new experience. You know, not just going down there for the money, but going down there, you know, to help people that lost their homes. It's pretty bad down there. Hopefully we can go down there and make a difference on them. I've lived on the Gulf Coast for about 25 years. Our area was slammed by Hurricane Katrina. Three quarters of the homes were either severely damaged or totally destroyed. And when I mean totally destroyed, I mean gone and everything in them gone. So I'm the field director for the Gulf Coast Recovery Corps, which is a project of the Corps Network. The entire project has assembled together 27 different teams from around the country with different youth corps organizations to address disaster relief in the Gulf Coast area of Mississippi. Primarily, we've been working on new construction and refurbishing homes that have been damaged. This is uh, the first house we come to when we got here. We've worked here pretty much every day. My name is Alberta Soche, and I live here in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, at 512 Main Street. Well, when I, the hurricane came, I was in the house, and the water came in and walked in the water to the back bedroom, got out of the window, and went over to my neighbor's house because the water was quite high. What they're doing in my home now, they put the sheetrock, they painted the walls, they did part of the wiring, they did outlets. See, they are going to um, finish the flooring and put the um, carpet down. My experience with the West Virginia Conservation Corps since they've, they've been on the ground has been that in two and a half weeks these guys have been able to assist with the rebuilding of three or four different homes here in Bay St. Louis and Waveland. The crew members from West Virginia have been very energetic, uh, motivated, very willing to try anything. I have been working with the West Virginia crew members uh, probably for about three weeks now. They're real diligent kids, they work hard and they're, they're always up for asking questions. The West Virginia kids have certainly uh, made their way down here in the effort and have done a great job helping out with with uh, the rebuilding effort and those construction skills have come in really handy. I'm glad that we're getting young people who have some skills. Me doing some my little part really does really does help. It does help like, even when you think that you know one person can't change anything it really can change. You know it sounds kind of cliche but you know it, it really is you know something that's important. You know when you realize how important it is when you see the devastation that Katrina has caused. They tried to cheer me up and make me feel good about myself and, you know, not be so sad or anything. The majority of us who are working as case managers, at least in my office, um, we all experience some degree of loss ourselves. Um, so while we're trying to help other people rebuild, we're also trying to rebuild our own homes and there's just not enough hours in the day. So if it weren't for people coming from out of the area, um, either with volunteer labor or with goods or with financial assistance, then nothing would be getting done. Community service is huge for the CCC. For example, McDowell County Drug Free Day, where our staff volunteered with school-aged children from kindergarten to 12th grade. We also participated in Martin Luther King Day, a day of service. We went to a local elementary school, recruited volunteers, had special guests and speakers throughout the day, and actually helped paint the inside of the entire elementary school. One of the programs that's very dear to the CCC is CAWV, Challenge Athletes of West Virginia. CAWV is an adaptive sports program for challenged athletes. The CCC has participated in and been involved with a wide range of events, activities, and fundraisers. One of the fundraisers we're most proud of is the Green Bar Challenge. The Green Bar Challenge first began as a fundraiser for the ski building that we built for the Challenge Athletes of West Virginia. The future is bright for the Citizens Conservation Corps of West Virginia. McNeil County uh, was one of the richest counties in the United States at one time. 
We had over 100,000 uh, in the population, or down to about 25,000 now. Oh, it was a beautiful place. It was a beautiful place. Welch was one of the popular places because there were all the stores and the theaters and, and everything that you could come to see and do all the shopping. And, and they had a transit bus that used to come and pick people up and bring them to the stores. And so it was a booming town. And once the mines left, everything starts shutting down. The economy is doing a little better now, but it still needs a great influx to just to even stabilize. The county commission has become involved with the uh, CCC recently when uh, they purchased a uh, coal property that we refer to as the Twin Branch Dam property. Twin Branch will be a recreation area. Uh, there's 118 acres here that will be put to uh, use. Uh, it will also boost the economy and it will be um, an environmental asset to the community and an authentic historical site. We think that it has a lot of potential there in terms of our Hatfield-McCoy trail system, which is basically a four-wheeling uh, uh, adventure type uh, enterprise. Well, the Hatfield-McCoy Trail is, is uh, all in southern West Virginia and it involves two or three thousand miles of trail systems and they charge four-wheelers to ride on that and we're hopeful to uh, connect into that system to where people will, will uh, make Twin Branch a uh, trailhead. Their family can go up to the um, uh, coal mine site and see where Henry Ford had a coal mine in here in the 1930s. Uh, we're going to have an environmental education center where students and the community residents can come and learn about their ecosystem and uh, the environment. We've also built a uh, pavilion and we're going to have a, a paintball field. Out on the level flat area here, we're going to have um, at least 10 luxurious type cabins. Right now the pond is empty, but when we put in the new gate valve, the pond will be filled and it'll be approximately four acres, uh, a small lake, and we're going to have uh, fishing on one end and uh, a little beach area on the other. RV campsites at the end, and then we're going to have tent campsites and a bathhouse with restroom and laundry area. We will also have a trailhead at the uh, park office where the ATV riders can come and get their permits. The facility here and the uh, two small businesses will furnish up to 11 jobs for local residents in the community and it will bring in over uh, $750,000 in annual revenue through payroll and uh, goods supply to Twin Branch. When all this is completed, Twin Branch is going to be a really exciting place to bring your family. There's going to be something for the young and for the old to do. Um, you can be entertained all day long. You can go on trails, you can hike, you can fish, you can uh, picnic, you can bird watch. Uh, all the other wildlife here, you can just have a great time. Our people are real excited about Twin Branch and the Hatfield McCoy Trail coming to Twin Branch. It's going to be an educational in scope. It's going to be recreational. It's going to be a place you can go relax. It's going to be a place where you can go and, and learn about our history. It's going to be a place you can learn about our culture. It really means a lot to the, the people of that community. It, it brings traffic back into that area and it brings potential to, um, to open stores and hotels and, and things of that nature. The buzz is everyone would like to see the, the project get off the ground and, and bring more ATV enthusiasts and tourists alike to, to our uh, county. I think it's a, it's a drawing card for the county. I think it's a, a diverse project that's going to draw people from different regions of the country to bring in some new money. And when I say new money, I mean money that is external to McDowell County. So we can put that money back in the tax base to attract other citizens, to attract other kinds of programs, products, and services that are going to be good for people who live in the county. Another project we are very excited about is the Green Project. The Green Project encompassed everything that was green, a, a pumpkin patch, a, a Christmas tree farm, and a vegetable garden, kind of like a Salads R Us uh, restaurant. Uh, this project encompassed 300 acres of uh, our company's property. It would have all the entities that I've just mentioned, plus uh, cabins and other recreational green projects within the 300 acres.
As we invest in the future of West Virginia, we need you to invest in us. When you think of the future of West Virginia, think of me. 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 I am the future of West Virginia.